John. Yeah, Gandalf's over capacity again. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, we, we got to do something. Uh, hold on, George just came in. Hey, uh, database is out of capacity again. Uh, of course it is. All right, well, I got the guy on the phone. Hold on. All right. John, can you tell me uh, what array is servicing Mordor? Please tell me it's not Gandalf. Uh, of course it is. Did you just call my database Mordor? Yeah, yeah, but that's only because of naming convention, not because it sucks in all resources and nothing good comes and I'm still talking, aren't I? Uh, uh, <laughs> never mind. Hold on. Yeah, uh, look. Okay, we got to do something. Um, give me the apps that are running on Gandalf. All right, fine. Yeah, move migrate Shire over to Frodo, use the extra space, and then upgrade the drives in Gandalf for more capacity. How long will that take? Are, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, I'll talk to you later. Uh, so, George, I got, I got good news and I got bad news. Which would you like first? You pick. Bad news it is. Okay. It's going to take three weeks or so. Wow, that's a real problem for us. I, I know. Oh, the good news is, though, we're going to give you 10 terabytes. You're going to have lots more extra space. You're just telling me that just to keep me happy. Well, yes, that's true. But look at the positive. I got a bunch of free time for the next three weeks? There you go. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks very much. Later. Hey. Hey, George, welcome back. Please tell me you have enough capacity on the database. Well, after that three-week ordeal, we at least got that resolved, but now the users are complaining about performance. Ah, and it's the storage, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we've identified it, did all the troubleshooting. We, we think it's absolutely a storage performance problem. All right, look, let's just solve this once and for all. Okay, Hold that's on. a good idea. Hey, hey, Bob. Yeah, look, I need more budget. Oh, I need to migrate uh, the database, the core database, over to a Flash array. I want to buy a Flash appliance. That sounds good. I like Flash. Yeah, Mordor. Oh, come on. Our data volumes are growing at 50% a year. You got to give me some budget to accommodate. No, no, I understand. All right, all right, no, I'll, I'll call you back. Cheers. Yeah, I'm really busy. What's, what's the deal? Like the best I can do, we've got some Flash that we've installed in Gandalf. Yeah. I can't get you a Flash Who's appliance. Gandalf again? Gandalf is a, the SAN array. The SAN array, OK. And Mordor is my database. Mordor is your database. OK. Not for any bad reason. OK. Can we look at the tables in the database, move the active data, partition it out, we'll put that on flash, we'll leave the rest on the hard drives, you'll get your performance that way. You know how much time it's going to take? I, don't have, I mean, my guys are busy. I, they I, got, I, I mean, we don't get to name people after I, I, under, I understand that, but it's, at the moment, it's the best I can do. I mean, you know, I guess we'll have to do it. So I got to, how, how much space do I get on a flash space do I get here? We can probably get you two terabytes. All right. Uh, all right. So when we just got to pick the tables that are the hit the hardest and try to move them there. Correct. And, and, and how do we map to them? I mean, how, how do we do all that you stuff? You partition it out. We'll help you migrate the data over. We'll work on it together. That's, that's a real problem. Why can't we just get an all flash array and just solve the whole problem? We just don't have the budget. I thought we were making money. We are, we are, but I mean, my, your budget's not growing, my budget's not growing. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Well, that, between that and licensing is killing me. All right, all right, thank you. Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. What you just saw was a microcosm of the life of a storage administrator, having to deal with uh, database administrator and database manager problems and having to wrangle through things and not have enough budget and move things around. Well, one of the things we can do to fix that is leverage software-defined storage solutions that allow this movement of data to happen more seamlessly. Joining me on the whiteboard to talk about how that might happen, I've asked Andrew Flint. He is the Vice President of Marketing at IOFabric. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. Thanks for having me. So what difference in that scenario would IOFabric make? So the, the, my first problem was I got a capacity problem. So what, right. how, how would IOFabric help there? So rather than doing all the, my, all the manual migration and moving data around and provisioning and out storage, really capacity should be seamless. You should have one software-defined storage fabric 
that covers all the SAN or NAS arrays, also any direct attached storage, and you know, even if it's their cloud. Okay. All of this managed as one shareable resource okay. and dished out as needed and paying attention to the application's need and delivering the capacity, if it exists anywhere, to fulfill those demands. So from a, a, a database administrator or a database manager's standpoint, I wouldn't even have seen the capacity problem occur. It, it would have just you know, gone and got space from somewhere else. Exactly. You would never have been in my office complaining that you're running out of space, unless for some reason the entire company is out of space, in which case we'd know from the system right. we'd be dealing with that in advance. So if you're a storage administrator, never having the database administrator come into your office is a good day, right? That's a good day. Yeah. So then how about the, how about the second problem? I, so I came in and I had a performance issue. That seems like that might be more tricky. So unlike capacity where you want to use whatever capacity you have and, and give it out as needed, you want a little bit more control over performance because you don't want the case where one lower priority app, not saying it was yours, is stealing all the performance from everything else. Okay. So you want to be able to set performance levels based on response time, IOPS, bandwidth on a per application or group of application basis okay. and have the system use flash versus hard drives closer and further away from the application to manage those QS levels and deliver everything that's been asked for. Okay. So my, my app was Mordor and it was I apparently named because it was sucking all the performance out of the environment. How would you limit that from happening in that scenario? So for something like Mordor, uh, you probably want a high transactional style QoS. So low latency, high IOPS. So for the active data, that will automatically flow to Flash, okay. be able to deliver that level of performance the inactive data stays on hard drive, so you're not taking everything. You're not taking all my performance media. The rest of the organization gets some as well. Now, is that something that the uh, that me and my role as a database administrator, do I make that decision, or do you make that decision for me as a storage administrator, or is that something where we work together on it? We should work together, because you as a database admin should know what sort of performance you need. Mm -hmm. You then want to be able to rely on storage to deliver it. Okay, so then I, what I would do is I would come to you and say, hey, look, I've got this new application coming online. It's going to probably need about 30,000 IAPs consistently. And then you look at your resources and provision accordingly. Exactly, and that's the last really important point, is that can't just be a solution where we go out, rip away everything that we've had, and reinstall brand new everything, all the right. flash appliances. Right. But we're making better use of all the storage we already have to deliver those QoS levels. We add capacity and performance independently going forward, so you get more life out of your existing storage and a way to grow. Well, one of those uh, resources is available RAM, as I recall, correct? Yes, yep. You can use, for direct attached storage, you can go right up into available DRAM for ultra-low latency response times. Okay, so like for some of my read-heavy, uh, in my database world, in my read-heavy indexes and things like that, they, those could load up there. Exactly, and then your archive tables, they may have flowed all the way down to the cloud for the slowest possible access, but the cheapest possible access. So let's, let's talk uh, specifically to our little scenario that we had there. In, in that world, it was gonna take you three weeks to, to shuffle things around and get me the 10 terabytes of capacity I need. Um, I, I guess the answer is, I was going to ask you how long would it take in, in, with IO Fabric. I guess the answer is it would have never happened because I always had the capacity I needed. It should be fully automatic. Okay. But you're absolutely right. The majority of companies out there now measure their provisioning time in days or weeks. Right. Where this makes it on demand. Right. So it's a not it's like it's not something you don't even measure because it just happens all the time. Correct. Now, let, but let's say you know something happens where in a performance situation where I let's say I said 30,000 IOPS and you notice that I'm never using more than 5. Can you go back in as the storage administrator and say, "Yeah, let's ratchet that down a little bit so I can use the resources elsewhere?" I can. I'd want to do it with your involvement. Okay. But the entire system is dynamic. It's paying attention to application workloads. Okay. you need from performance and capacity and such. Also changes in the infrastructure. Networking cards go down. We blow the cache on one of the arrays. Any storage resource starts responding at a different performance level. Everything dynamically adapts to that. Okay. As well as my going in and dialing up performance or dialing it down. You don't see a lot of storage admins dialing down stuff. But it could. But happen. it would work. Yeah, okay. Well, Andrew, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for having me.
So there you have it. You know, what we painted was a, hopefully a humorous look at a very common scenario of the headbutting between a storage administrator and a database administrator. Uh, with a solution like uh, IO Fabric, you can go in and, and really the conversation doesn't even have to occur because you can have policies in place that automatically provision and allocate both capacity and performance resources. I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.